Well, I want to give you good news. كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Allah remains in the assistance of a worshipper. For as long as that worshipper remains in the assistance of another. If you want help, the first thing to do, start helping others. You'll get the help. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says. And like I said earlier, it's our duty to go out and hunt. You know, I read the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhuma. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, one of the things he says about zakah, he said you should teach the people one, two, three, and then he said, فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ فِي فُقَرَائِهِمْ Let them know. Let them know that Allah has made incumbent or compulsory upon them that they give a charity. It shall be taken from the rich and distributed into the poor. Subhanallah. That is why Allah gave you more. Allah did not give you more so that you can amass it to the degree that you have forgotten to build your hereafter. Allah gave it to you so that you can give others. وَآتُوهُمْ مِمَّا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي آتَاكُمْ In Surah An-Nur, Allah says, Give them from the wealth of Allah that He made you a custodian of. Do you know what that means? It's not yours. مَا لِلَّهِ The wealth belongs to Allah, not to you. You're a custodian of it. When you came onto the earth, like I started off by saying you had zero. When you shall leave, you shall leave with zero. What you did in the center, in the middle, your transactions and the way you transacted, that is what will help you in your grave and in your hereafter. So build, build your palace in the hereafter. It is everlasting way beyond your imagination. And this is why my brothers, my sisters, today we are seated here. 30 years of Africa Muslims agency. Hafid Imran made mention of my father. I was going to say that anyway. That I recall your dad, may Allah give him Jannatul Firdaus. And for your information, that's the reason why the moment I received a call, I have a soft spot for Africa Muslims agency. I told him, brother, I will be there. He told me, we will cover your costs, we will this. I said, listen, brother, I'm not interested in covering any costs. I will be insulted if you gave me anything. I'm coming for the sake of Allah. And I'm coming because I believe it's good work. And I'm coming because I'm impressed by what has been achieved. A little seed that was sown. And don't you dare think that, oh, this is money from the Gulf states. No way. If you think that, it's the devil making you run away because of some bad deed you've done from giving. It is money from here that's distributed across the globe. I promise you, the South African example shines across the globe. It's one country that Allah has blessed in, an, in a continent that really needs a lot of help. So thank Allah. Keep on giving. When you give, Allah will give you more. I promise you. Ma naqasa malun min sadaqa. The Prophet says, nobody has ever become bankrupt because of giving. Charitable. Subhanallah. That's a guarantee from your messenger. If ever you fear poverty, give charity. It will come back to you. Multiply. I promise you. It's in the Quran. If ever you fear poverty, give a charity. It doesn't have to be all your money like Abu Bakr, as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Those were the superheroes. We could not compete with them. But what it definitely is, small portion, one rand, five rands. And this is why when you read Surah al duha if you were to read it with its meaning, your life will change. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by the choice of Allah, divine choice, he was an orphan. Why? Isn't that consolation to all the orphans across the globe that the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the top of the top was actually an orphan? There's hope for you more than there is for me who had both parents. Wow. Wow. Allah has chosen you, my beloved orphan. Child. 
Allah has chosen you way above me. Your head start is a few kilometers in front of me. Because the most beloved, already there was a quality from birth that you share that I don't have. That's why Allah says, وَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقَهَرْ As for the orphan, don't be hard on him. Don't be harsh. Don't rebuke. Don't abuse an orphan. Be kind. Subhanallah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about an orphan. He says, Ana wa fil jannah. Myself and the one who takes care of an orphan shall be in paradise like these two fingers. And he joined the two fingers that I'm showing you right now, the first and the second. Why? Those are in need. People say, innocent children, yes. But they're in that condition because it's a test for you who are around. What will you do solely for the sake of Allah? Will you help? There is a widow. The hadith says those who spend their day or those who assist widows and orphans for the sake of Allah are equivalent in reward to the one who stood in prayer all night every night and the one who fasts every day on condition that you do it for the sake of Allah. Today, she's a pretty lady. Let's help. Subhanallah. You know what I'm talking about. It's facts. But she's old. You know, she might not be that attractive. Subhanallah. What hypocrisy is this? Is that what we've become? Is that how low we've become? I'd like to hope it's not the case. You help for the sake of Allah and Allah alone. Allah alone. And remember, if you don't help, it's quite simple. It's going to come from someone else. And it's been proven. Read the verse of the Quran. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ If you turn away, Allah says, we will replace you with those who won't be like you. They won't be like you. They'll be better. So don't think the work of Allah and don't think reaching out to the poor across the globe is connected to you alone. No, if you are on it, it's a favor of Allah that he convinced you, he put it in your heart to give. But if you are miserly, trust me, the work will continue even beyond your imagination with others. It will continue. I remember there was a brother who told someone at one of the organizations that you know what after pledging so much he says i'm not giving because he had a little misunderstanding as he walked out of the office there was a brother sitting outside he walked in he put down a figure twice the pledge of the brother who just walked out wow i witnessed this with my own eyes and i was just looking and i said ya ilaha alamin oh allah you have indeed spoken the truth Replace with someone else. This man walked out. Another thing, my brothers, my sisters, this evening I said it elsewhere and I'm repeating it. A pledge is as good as a bird in the sky. Remember that. A pledge is as good as a bird in the sky. When you catch the bird and put it on the table, you have now fulfilled your pledge. Otherwise, I know of many who pledge huge amounts. They never put their money where their mouth is. Never. I hope we're not like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We can pledge. The organizations come and showcase for us while we're on our beds through the month of Ramadan and at other times and we're sitting flicking and we're hearing, you know, these people are dying in Niger and this is what's happening and so on. You know, my brother, my sister, it's your duty to feel the pain of all of those. Where is the hadith? Al-mu'minuna kal jasad al-wahid. Ida ishtaka minhu udu. Tada'a lahu sa'iru al-jasad bil-sahri wal-humma. The mu'minun are like one body. If a single part of it is struggling, suffering in pain, the whole body shall struggle with sleeplessness, insomnia, pain, etc. And perhaps fever. What was happening and what is still happening across the globe? We all want to help. Well, I can tell you, I started off by saying, make dua after that. Reach into your pockets. And you know what? You will not all be able to go there physically. I've been to some places, not all. And what could I have done? Very little. Had it not been for a lot of people behind me having sent me with a reputable organization to say, you know what? We would like to assist. Can you take this and make sure it gets to the recipient? And if they're honest, 
Subhanallah, you will feel the blessings in your own selves and your children and your loved ones and your community. So don't think for a moment that, you know what? What are they doing? No, what am I doing? What did I do? How much do I have? What can I give? Subhanallah. I was saying, your father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannatul Firdaus. I've met him many times. I met Dr. Abdul Rahman as Sumait many times. And they've been with Sheikh Saad Talib to my house, sitting so many times. I, you know, sometimes together and separately as well. What was the discussion all about? I was a kid. I was a child. Remember, 30 years ago, I must have been, what, 15? Gave my age away. No stress. But at the same time, subhanallah, I recall and the discussion was all about going. I used to go out with them to rural areas. I used to go out and we used to see what was happening. We used to distribute. And you know what? That continued all along. So when I see the children of the same man doing the same work with the same dedication, if not now that it's three people, perhaps a little bit more, but the barakah of that Generation was something else. Trust me, I always say this is a sign of acceptance from Allah. I know with us, we've taken from my dad in my family, subhanallah. And I start thinking to myself, when people continue the effort that was good of their fathers, it's a sign that Allah has accepted it. I see amongst us some seated here, and I know their fathers. Some of them are late, and their mothers in some instances. And I promise you the brilliant work they were doing is continued. I want to cry when I think of what's happening. But there are others who keep pointing fingers and their job is only to look for faults rather than to help, to assist. I'm doing something wrong. Please come to me and guide me, tell me, correct me. I'm a human. I'm your child. I'm your brother. Come and tell me, listen, son, listen, my brother. I think this wasn't right. How you said it, what you said, what you did. I will improve myself. I promise you, you don't have to go out and attack in a way that subhanallah, you're destroying the entire ummah. And this is what's going on today. We don't do the good work and we don't want others to do the good work. Leave them alone. My fathers taught me that the best of people are those who don't harm you. Subhanallah. I don't need your help anymore. That's what I understood from what he said.